Okay, let's move on to Hulk Hogan. A court is hearing his lawsuit against Gawker this week. In 2012, the website published a lengthy description of his sex tape, along with an excerpt of the video. Hulk Hogan is now suing for invasion of privacy and looking for $100 million in damages. Somewhat ironically, the whole thing is being live streamed. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, we're yeah. all tempted to laugh at this you story. You go to me first, of we, yeah. and we are laughing at yeah. this story. But to be serious for a moment, what do you think is at stake here with this case? With uh, uh, well, the lawsuit against Gawker? I mean, I mean the American uh, laws are so much uh, vaguer than Canadian laws, often to their advantage. Uh, the question is basically: Is this newsworthy? Um, and the argument that they're using is that he's already brought up his sexuality. I guess that's the most polite way I can describe it. Although <laughs> God knows with the <laughs> Republican debates, like or surely we're, you know, we're talking about all this stuff all the time. But, um, you know, has it been made newsworthy? Uh, is that enough to justify the violation of privacy? And it's, I don't. I, re I genuinely don't know. Well, I think the I mean, other thing, I'm really torn. I think the thing that's actually very complicated and f quite fascinating in this case is that um, the the argument that Terry Balia is his is, is his, his real, real name, name is that he's saying that when he went on Howard Stern and was really bombastic and talked about his sex life, that that was as the character mm -hmm. Hulk Hogan. So he's saying that the sex tape is of him Terry, not him Hulk. And so wow. he is saying that there is there there is a distinction between the character he portrays. Yes. And and the human, human being, being and actor slash you know wrestler that portrays him and so I think what he's saying is I I don't have privacy as a character but as an individual um, I have privacy and I think yeah. that's what's making this more complicated which I it's, think is fantastic it's very it's very complicated so Gawker's defense so far is that they have a constitutional right to publish <laughs> true things <laughs> true things that are about, of interest to the public about public figures yeah. Um, Hulk Hogan has this sort of complicated defense. He's very upset. He feels mm -hmm. like he was betrayed. Charles, why is this somehow a punchline at the same time, this, this case? <laughs> it's a punchline because, I mean, you just can't get out of your head that, you know, this figure, right? And this is where I think the argument is so strong. We can't get out of our minds that this is Hulk Hogan, the guy that's, you know, massive and, and the energy and all this stuff, but that, that there's actually a human being in there and that there is a separation. And, you know, number one, we're talking about Gawker. I mean, they're not the number one, you know, newsworthy uh, resources I would go to for uh, things. But but at the same time, I think there there's a whole audience out there of individuals who love this stuff and, and, and believe, it. but they're but they're actually flashes for a second and it's gone. But what the effect that it may have on someone like you know, what he's trying to say is it has a larger effect on his life. Uh, you know, sex, I think, I, I believe, no matter if it's consensual and, and, and how many people are involved, it's still kind of a private thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you know what I mean? That's a really controversial point. My um, God. I mean, I mean, I mean, ultimately, Is sex intimate? I, I mean, yeah. I mean, intimate. I mean, but I'm starting to say private. There's, yeah. right. there, there's, right. there's a private space for that, and right. I think you know whether or not. I, I just don't believe that Hulk Hogan was like, yeah, guys, you know what? Get those cameras rolling. Mm -hmm. This is here. Here I go. Like right. you know. So at the same time, someone is actually being exploited. Right. You know. So Definitely. I think we can. I think we can write about it. That's great. But even though this this video is out, like I haven't rushed to watch it. I'm not really like you know um, excited about <laughs> about watching Hulk Hogan go at it with uh, his friends. It's wife. the most depressing thing. Ever. <laughs> I mean, it's so it's so dark. And right. I mean, you know, uh, like is sex intimate? Like actually, that's a question you could ask after right. watching. But, it. Right. But, yeah. but, but, but you're I, right. It is difficult for us in our imaginations to dis distinguish this character, yeah. Hulk Hogan, that we've been seeing for 30, 40 years from Terry Boley, yeah. none of us even knew his name around yeah. the table right. until this case. Right? Yeah, and I, 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 and again, I also think that we, and I think this is the other point that that he's making is that um, this we're not in the age of you know VHS tapes. We're in an age when something is on the internet; it's it lives out. there forever. Yeah. And so I think that part of it too is um, you know you have something that you did in the past, and I think that the tape was made years earlier, and then it was published five or six years later. So you also have something where perhaps you changed your mind, you want something different, and that is going to, when someone Googles you, this is now going to be the first thing that comes mm -hmm. up. And I think that there's a, there's an issue around um, reputation in, in the internet age, in the digital age, that is something that, that we're really newly grappling with. Like we don't, the, re, the repercussions of something now existing online is very different than what it would have been a generation ago. You know, we need a Judy Hopps at God. <laughs> <laughs> we, we Judy, Judy Hopps for everything. Judy Hopps. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was, I was wondering to myself, like, if this this were Amy Schumer, how would I feel? 
Because, you know, Amy Schumer talks about her sex life all mm-hmm. the time. Like, she ma- she's made that a matter of newsworthiness, I guess mm-hmm. you could say. But if she were being taped having sex and then it were on Gawker, how would we feel about but it? But I guess the question is, do we do we think that public figures are entitled to a private life? I think that's what it comes mm. down to. Yes. Do, we, do we think that the moment a person says, I'm a public figure, that they abandon all rights to any kind of privacy in a private life? Well, I would argue that that's not fair. Yes. And clearly Gawker is saying, absolutely, once you step into the public sphere... We own you. And is there a a, a distinction between a public figure like Hulk Hogan, who is famous, versus somebody in a position of leadership and authority? And that's a really good question. I mean, again, I think this became a really controversial thing in the 80s when um, people started outing as a a political campaign. Um, And I think that there was this issue around, you know, is it okay to out somebody who just happens to be a movie star who's closeted? Is that different than outing somebody who's a congressman who is actively voting against, you know, gay initiatives Mm -hmm. um, and is and is leading a gay life in private? There's a huge difference. And there's a difference. Yeah. And so, again, I think there's a difference between newsworthiness around does this reveal corruption or hypocrisy or, you know, some some sort of wrongdoing? And is this a titillating detail about a celebrity's private life? Well, here's a complicated question. Is there a difference between this Hulk Hogan case and the case of sportscaster Aaron Andrews, right. well, uh, who was awarded $55 million last week over nude videos posted online. A, a, ju- a jury agreed that she had a right to privacy, even as a public figure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah. she, I mean, I, you know, the newsworthy, that's the newsworthy question hangs on that, because mm-hmm. Aaron Andrews never brought up her sexuality, never made it part of her public persona, never... Uh, you know, never made a big deal out of it. She was just simply, you know, a, a creep got in and th- and drilled through a hotel wall. So it's, you know, there but is there, a, there is a meaningful kind of distinction. Creepy. I don't know if it's a, enough to constitute a legal distinction. I don't know if it's enough. It's whether it's enough to constitute an ethical distinction, but there is a real distinction between those cases. And I guess what, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. But what is someone's like, you know, their right l- l- land in terms of, you know, they're performing, they're doing something, someone takes video of it that is something that they don't want mm-hmm. specifically out and they, you know, take it and someone publishes it. Mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's, I see that, you know, with the Aaron Andrews situation, some, I don't see the person who, dug that hole in the wall any different than than the, the gentleman or whatever the guys who took the tape of Hulk Hogan or, or right. filmed that mm-hmm. in a certain way. It's just, what are your intentions? Right. And I know? guess the other question is, you know, because we, we talked about TM, TMZ a few weeks back, um, you know, is Gawker legit, is Gawker legitimately acting as a journalism outlet at well, this Well, there's moment? no question right. they are. Right. I mean, we could sure. still have Rob Ford from right. there if yeah. it weren't for that. But, but I think that that, you know, <laughs> like, I think really. the question is also like, you know, what is the distinction also between like the creepy guy that drilled the hole in the in the wall to spy on Aaron Andrews <laughs> and, and, and the outlet and you and me. says and you and me. <laughs> I, I mean <laughs> it's tough to know <laughs> sometimes. <laughs>